Winners loud. Let's go. go. Check. We prepped oh, 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 it's okay. Broncos Winners are, ride. It's Broncos okay. Two and one. Broncos country, let's ride. Let's ride, Broncos baby. Country, let's ride. That's probably also not the sound check we prepped for. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it just broke some oh, sorry about that. Wow. wow. I know this is not what wow. it actually looks like, but on our monitor, we just all look like lobsters. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Gross. Um. We gotta yeah, fix that. Tan went wrong. Yeah, the yep, tan goes yep. wrong. Too much time at the yep. uh, the old tailgate tonight. Mm. I tried to make it so you guys could at least see it. Yeah, because nice. before it was darker. Yeah, mm. it's great. So the I goal actually, isn't for you guys to look at yourselves; it's just to look at the comments. Did you? Yeah. I meant to have drinks for us to cheers to the end of the preseason. Ah, yes, we messed up. I'm pretty sure that deer can't see any colors except orange. I could be wrong about that. <laughs> like, do they see? I'm just going to choose to believe you. Yeah, no, I think that's true. Wow. Yeah. So I just was thinking when everything was orange, like a deer is probably loving this right now. Wow. A lot of deer watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, dear. This was, a, this was a fun one. I sat in the uh, Chisholm family seats. Yeah, yes. um, you had great be- seats. Best seats in the house. Shout out, mine. shout out Dean and Penny. Yeah, better than you guys. Um and the tailgate was awesome the game was oddly entertaining yeah i it okay let me ask you guys this was that game more entertaining than the most entertaining game of the preseason yes wow okay yeah. I, I wasn't sure because i wasn't sure if i was just caught up in the vibes of like the stadium doing the wave for 10 minutes straight it's while spe- Fayon hicks was yep. down with an injury <laughs> yeah. getting oh, treatment that was tough, that was <laughs> that's tough. rough yeah um, they're not doing the wave if russ is down there no well, the players <laughs> were the ones starting the wave so wow. make of that what you will <laughs> oh, wow. um, i don't want to throw any anyone under the bus but like bradley chubb oh uh, yeah. the one yeah. starting. Yeah. i could i would have guessed not russell wilson no, Russell Wilson. All right, so Russ, we just need to work on something. Like this oh. is my one Russ takeaway from the preseason. When he does this, like when he's trying to get the crowd mm-hmm. pumped up, it even dates all the way back to the Broncos Country Let's Ride video. It's way too lazy. Uh, uh, like he needs yeah. more like yeah. gumption in yeah. his like raise oh. the roof, mm. uh, get loud. It's like he's always. It looks like I don't know, like a um, a bird with broken wings. Wow, that's kind of sad. Yeah, huh. so we got to get that. He's gonna be out. doing the opposite though. He's gonna be calming them down. Oh, that's that true. Is true. Yeah. That is true. Uh, maybe he'll get someone fired like Peyton Manning. <laughs> yes. I feel like it's like a preseason thing. Like in the regular season, he'll really get into it, but you have to kind of match the vibe. Don't you, know? you practice how you play? Shit, he does. So, yeah. Oh, things like like that I daydream about are um, like Valley. if we got insanely popular guest what would be my first question okay um uh-huh. and my that would be mine to peyton manning like hey um do you feel bad about tr- trying to get that guy fired who probably made minimum wage he would have said tried to get him fired i got <laughs> it fired. he's like i don't try anything <laughs> right. and fail right um ali could i potentially request us maybe get some drinks yes oh, i wow. do want to point <laughs> um bryant's comment here it's 1 a.m in south carolina still celebrating the win let's ride love let's it go. absolutely love let's it let's go gotta of, celebrate all dubs absolutely speaking of shout outs gotta give a shout out to everyone that came out to the tailgate today so awesome another pop in time and uh shout out to joe from chicago who came who came by and said what's yeah. up to all of you us. remember that because he said yeah i always tell everyone zach's the best yeah of course yep yep um, so i had to give my guy joe a shout out yep uh mm-hmm. shout out to um, the people that said hi to me in the concourse mm. uh, means a lot. And then shout out to the person who said hi to me at Federales last night. Oh, um, nice. Yeah. No free advertisement, but that place is pretty dope. <laughs> that was free advertisement, though. No, it was. Yeah. No, not free advertisement. <laughs> but it was. Oh, let's go. Oh, so oh, honey dude. Oh, thank you. Let's go. Which one's mine? Not Ooh, also honey dude. You're gonna Heck open. Yeah. All right, I thought you were just gonna set it there oh, for no, decoration. No, no, Let's no, go. Don't worry, don't worry. Wow, these are ice cold. Cheers. Cheers. Really Preseason. End of the preseason. Broncos it. winning record. Right Let's get it. Right on. Oh, 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 right on. Okay. That's reach. There we go. That's reach, I love baby. it. Right. Uh, did you also share about how when we were driving over here, someone just screamed out their window? Love the Broncos, love the tailgate. Yeah, that was sick. Wow. wow. Yeah. Just recognized on the road profile. is a new one wow. for me. Wow, that is impressive. Um, so anyways, enough about us. Uh, Broncos, More Dub, less. and I think the number one question, boys, is who is QB2? Ah, the burning question for one last day. And one. then it's all about QB1. It is, yes. Mm-hmm. But this was the most uh, interesting storyline coming in. And I got to admit... 
I have changed my tune. Now, mm. I I was never, like, I, I maybe it came off this way. I was never out on Brett. I just didn't ever feel like he was going to get a fair chance at winning the job. Yeah, yeah. And credit to the staff, I don't think they ever looked at it that way. I think that they legitimately viewed this as a competition, and they clearly said he won last week. He deserves to go out and start this week. And here's what I'll say. If, big touch wood, if Russ went down, I would be com- very comfortable with Brett Rippon coming in for a short period of time. And I don't know if I can say that about Josh Johnson. Wow. Um, now, again, as I said, over if you have to go a long stretch, it's just over. Um, but let's just say it was for 10 plays. I'm more comfortable with Brett than I am with Josh. So give me Brett Rippon, QB2. I'm stamping it down. It's a good argument, but it's a wrong argument, Ryan. Mm. And uh, Josh Johnson is going to be the Broncos' backup quarterback, I think, because of one play. The pick? The pick. Yep. That's the, n- oh. the, the, the pick, and that's just not what I think. I think that's what Nathaniel Hackett thinks as well. When he was leaving uh, the field in the first half, Rod Mackey with Nine News talked to him, and Nathaniel Hackett said good things about Brett, just, you know, he was efficient and able to do things, but then multiple times pointed to the interception. Just about how you can't have that turnover. And to me, I just think that's it. And and you look at the stats, and Brett had really good stats outside of that one play. Josh did not have a touchdown, did not have an interception. I think that's what it's going to boil down to. That sucks mm-hmm. if that's the case. Um, very unlucky that it was intercepted. Yeah, um, that's true. But this is my favorite thing about being at the stadium when you can just see the all 22 and you can yep. see it. I looked to Allie before the play and I said, touchdown, KJ Hamler. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it was, you. I knew exactly the play they were going to run. I've seen them totally. practice that throw a thousand times in practice. And you know what they always emphasize when they, when they practice that play in practice? High throw. Got to throw it high. And he did not do that. And that allowed it uh, to get knocked down or knocked up weirdly and intercepted um but you could see it all lined up he was uncovered at the line you knew he was gonna run the little yeah kind of almost like a texas route uh or like a z- like a zig or a whatever you want to call it and it was it was there he yeah. really just had to wait another tenth of a second to throw it and throw it a little higher and that's a touchdown yeah and it was uh i mean it was great coverage by the defender, but it's probably a ball that you just don't throw or you yep. wait and, and you throw it at a better time. Uh, and that one, I think it's just going to be killer for Brett. And, and he mm-hmm. was actually asked after the game, um, he was asked, where does the quarterback battle stand? And uh, do you think you can get Brett Rippon onto the practice squad? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, it was like a two-parter. Yes. That was close. Oh, God. It actually was not. Oh. No, Arnie Stapleton. Oh, okay. Ooh, that's <laughs> that was, harsh. I was in the right uh, bracket. Um <laughs> Wow! Wow! Yeah, yeah. that's, that's interesting. Uh, so, so I, um, I, I always fear that I, I was scared you were gonna be like, yeah, uh, now Hackett said after the game that it's Josh. Oh. <laughs> so, damn it, <laughs> I missed that. Um, I think it should be Brett. I really do. I think he's so much more comfortable. Uh, he looks so much more comfortable. That first drive was so perfect the entire way yeah, down there. It was. I couldn't believe how settled he looked. And I think that's maybe the number one thing you need from a backup quarterback mm-hmm. is just calmness. Calm, cool, and collected, baby. And he goes Trevor back Simeon. there. He just chills in the pocket when it's clean. He doesn't force anything. Um, you know, he did a good job of scrambling when he needed to. He hit mm-hmm. open balls down the field. He didn't have. He had one bad miss on that first drive. Uh, I think he was looking for Andrew Beck and just threw it over his head. Didn't need, and he rushed it a little bit? Didn't need to. But other than that, it was just like. Boom, going through the reeds, hitting it. Um, you know, the throw to Seth Williams maybe could have been a little bit better, but good. Like he gets to that reed, he throws yeah. it down there, he completes it. Uh, and I, ju- I, I think I would feel more comfortable with him out there. And uh, one of the things on the throw to Seth Williams down the field, which could have should have been a touchdown if it yeah. was like a, a perfect leaf thrown mm-hmm. ball, but it was still a big completion. I'm not trying to yeah, trying to hurt Seth. Five yards. Or yeah. Um, one of the things that Nathaniel Hackett also said in that interview. Uh, was that that was all Brett Brett's call. They talked about the play yesterday, then Brett went out and he executed it. So that was Brett wanting to do that and then executing it. So, I mean, that that's also something that I think you add to, to Brett's tally. Hank, take your pick. Yeah, I mean, the tie. to me, it's it's a tie. And, and that's why the interception means you got to go Josh Johnson. Oh. Like, they both, they have their different strengths. I didn't think Josh Johnson did anything out there tonight. 11 of 14, though. For over 100 yards? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ball didn't really hit the ground much. And the thing is, he has moved so well. 
Like you, you can get out of the pocket and do more out there with him. And you know, if you if you know going into a game that you're going to have good protection, then yeah, why not? Throw Brett Rippin in there, and you're probably going to be happy you did. But if you're not sure that you're going to be putting him in good situations, I mean, that's where you struggle with Brett Rippin because unless he's in a good situation, bad things are probably happening. Um, again, like that's that's not to say it shouldn't be him who gets the job, but that interception is the one thing where again, like. It, you see exactly what he sees, just like Ryan said. Like, there's man coverage across the board. There's like the six guys up on the line of scrimmage. That one guy on the edge drops and forces him to take the extra two steps back before he cuts. And that's where you got to get off that read. Well, like, and, he's double covered there. And, and it's a great point about if everything's right for Brett, yeah. then it's going to work well. And that's what Nathaniel Hackett said when we talked to him this past week. He said, when Brett has good footwork and he has time, he's incredibly efficient. Yes. I think that's exactly the words he used. But there were just too many precursors for that and, and mm-hmm. setups where I just think that they're going to say, not only do we want to go with the guy who can run a little better and, and it's kind of more of a same style as Russell Wilson, but also older, can trust him, veteran. However, I do think it's pretty clear Brett Rippon has the higher upside here. Now, mm-hmm. how much does upside truly matter? Backup quarterback, what you want is consistency. but It especially doesn't matter when both guys are on a one-year contract. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you're saying, like we talked about earlier, like, let's go for Brett to try and, you know, bring him back on a cheap contract and just have him be our cheap backup forever. Right. Four year, five mil. Yep. Wow. Um, anyways, I want to say that our we are presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Hell yeah. Not four mm-hmm. seconds in. This <clears throat> Not time, four but... seconds in. <laughs> um, four conversations in? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll take that. Uh, so shout out DraftKings Sportsbook. Great presenting sponsor of this show. Um all right, well, it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. I will, but I, I don't think there's any chance Brett Rippon isn't here unless someone uh, wants to scoop him up. You yeah. think he makes it to the practice squad? Yes. Okay, I I do as well. I do too. I, I think eighty percent. I think there's about twenty percent chance that somebody thinks they're he that he's better than their backup quarterback. So uh, is anyone from the Broncos' offensive staff last year still in football? Um, <laughs> a lot in Minnesota. The Minnesota Vikings. Yeah. Yeah. We're mostly kidding. Um, <laughs> is he better than Mannion? Wow. I mean... This is what I mean about yeah. quarterbacks. They're all the same. They really are. <laughs> yeah. I thought uh, Mannion was like... I, kid, I joked with Henry earlier that he was 45, but I legitimately thought he was like 39 years old. He's only 30. That even feels old for me, just because I remember him playing at Oregon State. Mm, see, okay. that's how you guys know he wasn't old. Yep. Also, I remember him in in that Hard Knocks uh, with Jared Goff. It was the win, the one where yeah. they moved from St. Louis to L.A. And I just remember he was le- they do doing that thing from like the thirty or forty yard line where they go ten yards back and so they try to hit the goalpost. Yep. yep. And he was just lighting it up, man. Wow. Like Twenty got it. Thirty got it. Forty got it. Fifty got it. I was like, this guy's insane. Dang. Um, um, there is an interesting conversation happening in the chat of the backup quarterback situation being like the Broncos quarterback situation last year with JJ being like Bridgewater and Rippon being like Drew Locke. A, there's been a lot of comments with that comparison. Josh Johnson moves I, better. I can see one very obvious reason why those two guys would be compared. <laughs> oh <my gosh>. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, uh, I don't see it as much. Brett, like, Brett doesn't have an arm. What, what I'll yeah. say about... I mean, he has a good enough arm. And he's not stupid with the ball. <laughs> <laughs> like, stupid with the ball, to be clear. <laughs> he, he threw is, three picks last So we have a comparison that JJ is Bridgewater beautiful. with nice, safe passes. Rippin is a little more sporadic. So things like that. I don't see that. I, uh, to me, Brett Rippon is m- more like Teddy Bridgewater. I think Brett's a lot safer with the ball than, yeah. than than Drew Locke. Now that interception tonight wouldn't wouldn't prove that. But Drew was getting picked off by making really bad decisions yeah. and really errant throws. This one, like you said, Ryan, one second later, one second before, probably a touchdown. Just. Bad timing. Now the timing is on him. Uh, he was not open at the time that he threw it, and a great play, play by the defender. But it wasn't Drew Locke esque. Drew was just looking those defenders right in the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> he is. Oh my! Eyes. I wasn't sure we'd make it this far in the podcast because we watched a video, uh, uh, and about uh, a minute before we started this pod, and we were all dying. The, yeah, if you haven't seen it, the Greg Bell parodies are <laughs> going around Twitter right now is one of the funniest things that's happened <laughs> on NFL Twitter in a long time. Let's just say he was pulling for Drew. 
to be the starting quarterback. <laughs> Certainly, and, and it's kind of funny to see. Like, I don't think anyone got quite um, as um, charmed by Drew Lock, <laughs> um, but it is true. Like, it's 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 really easy to root for Drew Lock because he's a super charismatic individual. Yeah, yeah he and is. He definitely got. Uh, wow, you're going full Greg <laughs> Bell right yeah, now. He got, he got Greg got caught up in the in the eyes. <laughs> we gotta get him on the show. <laughs> Oh, man. Don't show him this. <laughs> that is true. That is Definitely true. don't show him us laughing before this show. Um, okay, well, let's talk about the other big battle mm. that was going to be decided tonight. Oh. Um, wow. The most exciting battle of the preseason, mm. punter, oh, baby. Heck yeah. yeah, punter talk segment one. All right, first punter <laughs> comment. Jacob Bob and Moyer might have to get cut for that. Dude, <laughs> that so the Broncos have been trying. They've had two different sessions of trying out long snappers in training camp. He's done. He's gone. Really? He, he's got to be gone. Yeah, they're going to bring someone else in. Dwayne Stooks. I can't oh, even imagine. Oh, my God. I was, <laughs> exactly. I was looking for him. I couldn't find oh, him. I know. They were like right there. So yeah. You can see a lot of great stuff. Did you see Sam Martin's reaction? It was like, a, oh, he was just like, what <laughs> the, I mean, that, I mean, that probably surpasses Kongbo for worst play of the preseason. Uh, what was, Con- oh, the jumping the, offside yeah. Oh, yeah. against oh, the Bills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The thing is too, uh, Bob and Moore noticed it as he was crossing the oh. end zone, like. It was just a half a second terrible decision. Yeah, and he grabbed it too soon in the first place. Right. Like, you know, I, I feel like if there's one thing I expect of my long snapper, he should know the rules better than anyone else. Because yeah. there's a lot of funky little rules on special teams. You should know those. Like, he's got to be the, the right, guy, like, running, right. like, you know, like, don't right. just touch yeah. it and leave it there. Like, he's the, he's the rules yeah. expert. I mean, he's legitimately one of three special teams players on the team. So you're absolutely right. right. He's like, the least special of all of them, too. <laughs> these guys are, you know, they play, all they do is play golf, play catch, and then practice for 30 minutes a day, uh, maybe. Hurt themselves playing catch. Yeah, exactly. Wow, and yeah. I just need you to know the rules perfectly. And for him to do that is like, dude, that's inexcus- straight up inexcusable. Oh. And again, let the ball roll a little further before you pick it up in the first place. Um, so I'm giving Sam Martin full credit for Man, pinning that on the five-yard line. Yeah, um, I'm, I cannot blame Jacob, uh, Jacob Bob Moyer's just complete mental oh, lapse my goodness. On, uh, on Sam Martin. So that's the pun of the night. Um, yeah, it from- was. Easily. It was. But... Here's where the it ended for me before anyone even punted. Oh. <clears throat> First field goal uh, of the night, Corliss Waitman's the holder. Yep. Um, and last field goal of the night, Corliss Waitman was the holder, I'm pretty sure. Um, was I, it Martin? I, I'm trusting the okay. radio broadcast oh, okay. on that one, so okay. I can't be 100% sure. Um, should be easy for them to uh, to identify who's holding. Why is that? Um, <laughs> the numbers. Yeah, the numbers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right, you're right. Um, so they, they did say, like, yeah, this was just – Purely like they they wouldn't maybe they wouldn't have normally kicked this field goal but they're doing it for to give Waitman another rep as a holder. To me, felt like they were prepping for Corliss Waitman to be the starting punter tonight. Completely agree, uh, mm-hmm. and so that's why I think Sam Martin uh, in uh, the two games he played outplayed Corliss easily. Uh, but I think to me it was fairly close, and when you can save money at, at punter and go young. I think that's the way they're gonna go. Yep. Carlos sure. Waitman's longest punt was 41 yards tonight. Was it? A, Remember that was one? He airing it out though on any. There punt? was one that went into the 20. Went inside the 20. Sam Martin also had the worst punt of the night, which was the line drive back spinner when they were when you were looking for a long distance punt that was returned for like 20 yards. That Waitman one was bad too. I th- there were two really bad punts. Was it returned though? It was. I don't know if that one was returned. Or returned I don't think for it a was big returned. return. Like, that's something that the special teams coach is looking that at is hang true. time. Like, uh, you know, if you're going to hit a 41-yard punt, at least make it high. Yeah. It, speaking of, really quick, though, uh, bad special teams. So that first Sam Martin one, obviously really bad play uh, by Jacob. Second, the very next punt was was the cordless one that get, pinned him in the 20. Uh, I think he got it to, I don't know, the 7 or something. And then there was a holding penalty on the Broncos yeah. special teams unit. So obviously neither of those on the punter, but you can't be having those mistakes on special teams. <clears throat> man, too. please do not forget to ask Dwayne Stukes about the Bob Moyer oh, incident. Oh, man. <clears throat> That's do all I, I ask. Do I do, I do it if he's not on the team by the time we talk to him? No, yeah. no. Yeah. Well, 
you could do like was that did that influence the oh, decision? Oh God, he, oh. he oh man! I just want to see. His, I, could, I feel like I can almost predict his like reaction. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> <what it would. laughs> He's an interesting guy. He is. Oh, like yeah. he is. He is just ninety percent energy. Yep, I love like, that for him. I know it's like that's what special teams is. It's just like vibes and like kind of scary vibes honestly. Oh, yeah. You you have to intimidate your players into caring about special teams. That's exactly. True. Um Brock Olivo did not have that and no, they did not respect him. No. They're like this freaking goofball. Yeah. Like who is this guy? Yeah. If if you have to worry about Dwayne Stukes chewing you out, if you screw up, you're like, damn it, all right, I'll pay attention. It's true. It's it's very true. Uh and Dwayne Dwayne Stukes, I don't remember what I was going to say about him, but he's a scary guy. Uh, a couple um, observations that I had. Oh, one, oh um, I already gave the Bradley Chubb was the one starting the wave. Uh, yeah. But the other one I had was, I don't know what happened, but Nathaniel Hackett was like surrounded by like a lot of the starters. And like they were all dying laughing and he was kind of like around them and then i saw him emerge and i've never seen someone's face more red like so i don't know what happened but he was so embarrassed like he was laughing with them but he like kind of like walked away quickly and his face was beat red wow so i was like what just happened (laughs) also he was dancing to uh, dua lipa Oh, okay. I love oh, it. He was, uh, man. He couldn't help himself, and then he caught yeah. himself and, like, <laughs> kind of stopped. <laughs> and you had Garrett Bowles and KJ Hamler uh, doing a little uh, arm-in-arm dancing with each other. Cotton oh. Eye Joe. Yep, yep, yep. They were going to Cotton Eye. That's awesome. Speaking of KJ, he looked good. He did, he did. look good. He looked, he looked really good. good. And, and KJ wanted to keep playing all game, uh, and Nathaniel Hackett actually had to be the one to pull him off. Uh, the the field, but he he looked good. He's ready to go. It's three times. I, know, I can't. I don't know. What to do. <laughs> he was using voice to text earlier. Oh, when we were wow. walking. I was like, "What is he doing?" <laughs> but the thing is, he wasn't even just like saying what he was saying. He was just like, "I have." <laughs> and it's like I'm sure it worked perfectly, but that was a that was a moment for sure. You say the period. Uh, oh, I did he quotes. Was, yeah. Oh uh, yeah, my quote. god. What were you doing it for? Uh, I just didn't want to text. I just you were doing that. that in the press box? No, no, when we were walking into the building. Okay, yeah, all right, yeah, better, yeah. better. No, no, oh my gosh, that would be brutal. <laughs> I was like, bro, you're, <laughs> that would be like, you're being launched into boomer <laughs> that, status. Yeah, that would be mom um, territory. Right you'd have away. like Mike Kliss saying, wow, that guy's old. <laughs> all right, <you're> right. <laughs> the other day, Ali's mom was trying to stop our Alexa, and it was oh, legitimately. Boy. Was she screaming? Yes, it was so good. It was so good. <laughs> Okay, she didn't know. She thought that Alexa was triggered by like a specific voice, so that it wouldn't turn on when she um, spoke to it. She was like making fun of it. She oh, was like, boy. "Alexa, play music," and then it started playing, and she's like, "Alexa, stop!" <laughs> and we just heard her it screaming from the bathroom. <laughs> Alexa, so stop! <laughs> it was so good. Um, okay, and then. Were there anything? Was there any other jobs on the line? Before we'll get to end of the roster stuff, but in terms of like this this person or this person, no. In terms of like a starting spot or something, yeah, or at least a backup. I don't think so. No, okay. um, I think tonight Alberto secured the starting tight end spot by not playing. Yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. So I think that was really one that he earned it by not playing. Yeah, it did me dirty. I would say. Uh, in we'll terms of there. the yeah. Uh, yeah. the preseason fantasy, which I will get to in the we third. Gotta, we got to get to soon. Yeah. Third or second? Uh, how about right now? All right. Let's right do after. it. We tell you oh. about DraftKings Sportsbook, hell yeah. where you can bet $5. This is also our uh, presenting sponsor, if you didn't know. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, you can bet $5 on any college football line, get $200 in free bets when you do. Hopefully, uh, like we all told you over and over and over again, you bet on yeah. Northwestern yeah. today. Yeah. Um, nothing like Fade and Frosty. Mm. And gosh, it's, it makes it even better that he personally lost them the game. Um, mm-hmm. by opting to go for the onside kick when they literally just scored back-to-back touchdowns to take all the momentum in the game. Yeah. Goes for the onside kick, which, sure, if it works, you look like a genius. The game's pretty much over if you get it. Yep. Um, and if it doesn't work, you've just given away all the momentum that you just got. And what what do we recover? Like less than 10% of onside kicks? Yep. So uh, a weird gamble, I would say, but not a weird gamble to bet on hey. Northwestern Moneyline plus 400. Hopefully you guys cash in on that. 
Hopefully you used $5 at least on that. Got your $200 in free bets for the rest of the day. Hopefully you didn't bet it on all the other underdogs that I suggested because none of them have won. Um, <laughs> but we got a plus 400 winner, so I only gave out four other ones, so you had at least break even. That's going to help a lot. That's going to help a lot for sure. Uh, so get over to DraftKings Sportsbook. Use that code DNVR when you sign up and get your $5 bet. Turn it into $200 in free bets. Uh, of course, age and eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com Sportsbook for details. And if you have a gambling problem, call one 800 Five two two four seven zero zero. We've got a hootenanny coming up, Ooh. guys. A hootenanny. Peyton Manning one. going? It oh, seems like yeah, a word he would yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that would. Yeah, it's, I feel like this word he made up. Probably. Yeah, probably got someone fired over it too. Yeah, probably. Uh, but we've got a hootenanny at Breckenridge Brewery coming up the weekend of October eighth and ninth. They're going to have live music, food, beer, of course, all the Breck brews, delicious Breck brews. They're going to have that at their Littleton location, the farmhouse. It's going to be so much fun. If you want to check it out, go to events.seated.com backslash hootenanny22 for more details. (laughs) It's a tough one, but events.seated.com dot com slash hootenanny 22 and it's going to be so much fun so make sure to go there and get your tickets for the weekend of october 8th and 9th can we get a definition on hootenanny um party for country folk is that uh, uh, uh i think that's is that it that's a decent guess i don't oh, think they're gonna put uh, country folk in a definition yeah like... close folk music gathering um uh, music really the music yeah. is an important part yeah. yeah i didn't know music was uh part of the definition yeah i just would have thought maybe dancing mm, yeah. yeah it says an informal gathering with folk music and sometimes dancing informal okay yeah oh, informal. oh it's definitely informal this seems pretty formal though I don't know. I, I got to think about that. It's formal in an informal way. Yeah, for you sure. Know? If you go to events.seated.com slash hootenanny22, that's pretty official. That is pretty yeah. official. Uh, also, Athletic Greens. Um, so here's a quick little update. Um, deer actually cannot see orange, but they can see most of the other colors. <laughs> oh, wow. no. So I got that flip. So famously, you know, when you go hunting, you wear So camo. the Broncos are just invisible to them. Mm. I guess. Wow. I guess. So that's Probably why hunters Broncos wear fans. like their orange over their camo. Adds up. Next time the Broncos play a quarterback that has deer in their name and he throws an interception on a big well <laughs> <laughs> It's understandable deer can't see orange. I like, so, like it. hopefully there's a guy named like John Dearborn or John something. Deer. Or John yeah, Deere. Yeah. <laughs> he could be him. Um, yeah, so uh, the point is, these deer need to be drinking athletic greens for the mm, adaptogens. Mm, they need wow. to learn how to see the color orange. These hunters are out there chasing them down. If you're the deer that drinks the athletic greens, can see orange miles ahead. You will survive. The others will not. I enjoy um, the way your brain works. Yeah. Uh, people, too. People <laughs> should good. also have the athletic greens because it has, first of all, the adaptogens, obviously, but then also things that help you with your energy and uh, your gut health, like vitamins and minerals and super, no, whole food source superfoods and all that sort Gotta of thing. Gotta be antioxidants. Oh, there's hella antioxidants <laughs> in there. Um, if you uh, if you sign up for athletic greens by going to athleticgreens.com slash Broncos, Broncos, I know where we are. Um, then you will get five free travel packs plus a year's supply of immune supporting vitamin D. So get in on that. Hell yeah. Uh, all right. Preseason fantasy. Uh oh. <laughs> I think we can just skip this. Um, yeah, you probably have the draft there. Oh, I mean, I feel like people could probably still hear me. Don't worry about blowing it up, Allie. Oh, no, no, no. All right. What happened? Uh, what happened was. Give us the scores for tonight and then okay. the final scores. Um, so, in third place tonight, Zach Stevens. Oh, that's not good considering he came in in third place. Yeah, uh. I bet you can imagine where he finished. <laughs> yes, uh, <laughs> I, I would guess he finished in third place. <laughs> he sure did. Uh, 18.6 points for our man Zach. Uh, no points from Alexander Madison, who did not play. Um, no points for Tried Brandon Johnson, you. who hurt his ankle. That's tough. Um, On like the first play of the game. Yeah. yeah. Nick Muse, the tight end, had a catch. Hey. Josh Johnson had uh, music to a Zach ears. fumble. No. Hey. So, no, no, no. He didn't have a fumble. He just uh, didn't do much to get points. Hundred yards. Hundred yards. Uh, and the Montreal Washington seven point one. That was solid. There we go. Good for you. Montreal. Yeah. Thank you got a touchdown. One, one of I, few. I got. Yeah. yeah. Um, that doesn't leave much room for me. Second place, RK. Uh, yeah. Oh, no. 26.8 points. Uh, Alberto, 
did yeah, not that's play. your guys' fault. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> both, both of you tweeted that he would play. Um, I trusted you guys. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and I was let down by that. So yeah. now it's Cliss or nothing. It's part wow. of the game. It's part- wow! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I only trust um, Mike Cliss, Benjamin Albright, wow. and um, uh, Jeff Legwald. Okay, I'll just meet you. Wow. Then. Yeah. Or no, I'll just block, block you. Me. So you <laughs> can't see my stuff. Yeah. Then I won't know when you're doing numbies. <laughs> <laughs> we do love the numbies. Speaking of numbies, Darius Shepard, one point eight points. Uh, uh, Brett Rippin. 4.18 coming in just when I've Josh had Johnson. any chance if he didn't throw that pick. If it was a touchdown yeah. instead. If it was a touchdown instead. So that's an eight-point swing. Yeah. You would have been close. Okay. Um, Yeah, that's basically all I go. Oh, we should say uh, Mr. Virgil, 9.8. Yeah, oh. man, he can play. How did he get? Oh, catches. Catches. PPR was big mm. this week because nobody was racking up yards. Uh, in first place was me with 30 and a half points. Uh, nothing from Dylan Parham. He had that one bounce off his hands. Yeah. Um, Amir Smith Marset had nine point three. Seth Williams ten point eight. Uh, Ty Chandler five point five. It was a good day. So was Seth Williams wow. the leading point getter of the night? Yes, he was. That's a perfect segue for us to get into. Damn. Who, who. I did have one more point I wanted to make. Wow, he just stopped your segue. Yeah, no, <laughs> before we move on from this. Zach had, uh, he finished with 47.6 points. Let's go, oh, baby. Right. We can stop there. I have 47.7 last week. Oh. Got him by a decimal Henry, in Henry, one Henry, week. Henry, Henry. I know, I got him. Uh, you should put your bag in his place next time. That's the time. second I fireball give you permission. event. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's where it goes. It just calls it. We see Zach Stevens so on name tag. It's like, yeah, just so disrespectful. Bag right there. <laughs> I'm going to throw it out the window next time. Those don't open. I'll make it open. <laughs> don't touch Zach's drum set, dude. Uh. <laughs> what is my drum set? Not the <laughs> not the press box. It was a callback to Step Brothers because he says, "Don't oh, touch my drum yeah, set," yeah, yeah, and then yeah. he puts yeah. his bag yeah. on the drum yeah, set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you better watch out for what's coming up on the desk next, <laughs> and you don't want the bag bag. Okay, fine. <laughs> um, okay, and then so what was the, what was the final scores? Don't choke. Oh, okay. Uh, as like I Zach noted did in this game. Oh, wow, boy, did he! So, wow. <laughs> uh, Let's move on. Forty-seven point six for like. Zach, sixty-eight point six for RK, seventy-eight point two for me. Good ah, job. So you would have been close. It's very clear the the rankings. Like it was two straight weeks of the yeah. exact same things. You're the you're the rightful winner. Oh wow! I wanted you to say Zach's the rightful loser. It's more fun. Well, to Zach look. is also the rightful. Okay, loser. Okay. there we go. The biggest loser. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's how you got so small. <laughs> <laughs> Just dominated four straight. Does this seasons. mean I have to go sit in a Waffle House now? Uh, oh, we should have had a patch. Should have at least had a Malort shot on the line. Oh wow! Um, yeah, we should have bet on this. Okay, so yeah, Seth, Seth Williams, the player of the <laughs> night, and likely. Potentially, possibly, locked up a spot on the roster, especially with Brandon Johnson having a high ankle sprain. Man, is this an opportunity for them to just stash Brandon Johnson for a year? Yeah. A high ankle sprain is certainly not going to keep him out all year, but a high ankle sprain could keep you out two months. For sure. Potentially. So throw him on the IR for the rest of the year. There's no rule that says, like, if the injury isn't bad enough, you can't put them on IR. Right. Mm -hmm. I would do that. Yeah. I would do that. And then it does open up a spot. My question is, a guy we talked about almost being a Sharpie, Kendall Hinton. Yeah. He wasn't on the field until after KJ left the field. Now, I get big KJ obviously being, being ahead of him. Yeah, and a, and a big drop. But it's not like they were playing Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy and KJ mm-hmm. Hamler, so he wasn't seeing the field. They were playing a lot of other guys with Hinton not getting his opportunity. So are there actually two spots now potentially open? Yep. I Who think there's get two the other one. Jalen Virgil, Tyree Cleveland, or uh, or they only keep five. I, I don't think they will, but I think that's on the table. Yeah, I think there's. I think everything's on the table essentially. Jalen mm-hmm. Virgil, um, Tyree Cleveland. Yeah, um, I think Kendall Hinton still has like he, he's scored NFL touchdowns. Yeah, you know. So yeah. it's like, uh, is that is that does that help him? I don't know, um, but. We definitely left this with more questions about wide receivers yeah. than we have answers. The biggest, the one that's eating at me 
is if Seth Williams just catches that absolutely perfect ball mm-hmm. from Brett Rippon on uh you know the deep in, it's he's I, I might sharpie him in. But the the biggest problem is he has a drop issue. Mm-hmm. And that is so difficult. It makes it hard for the coaches to trust him. It makes it hard for the quarterback to trust him. Uh, and, and, you know, we talk about him as a quote-unquote Tim Patrick replacement physically. But that's Tim Patrick's greatest attribute is his yeah. hands. And that makes it really hard for me to just to, to sharpie him in. I think that a lot of times coaches, depending on where you stand on the team, will will have those mistakes um, stand out to them more than the nice plays you made. And it's not like the the long pass from uh, Brett Rippon was Seth Williams doing anything. It was a broken coverage. There was no one within 20 right, yards of right, him. Right, right. Um, he didn't do a good job to adjust to the ball and make the play. But I, I, that, that drop is eating at me. And when I watched the replay, it was almost like – I don't want to uh, like make an accusation here, but it was like he was trying to be like too cool with it. Mm. He was like kind of like nonchalant <laughs> with his hands. I'm like, dude, get your damn hands up and catch the ball. Like, mm-hmm. look it in. It, the ball could not have been more perfectly placed right in front of his face. Yep. And his hands are like, I know they say like wide receivers should have late hands, but it was almost just like too light, just so yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. L- it almost looked lazy. Um, getting his hands up to catch that ball, and they go, it goes right through him, of course. So um, that that's eating at me. I still think he makes a roster based off of um, wow. the, the big plays he made. Wow. I don't because I feel like every week there's a drop uh, from him. And, Ryan, I just think you, you described it perfectly, and I'm just going to lean the other way, saying that he doesn't make it. We've talked about this. Tyree Cleveland is still on this team after having an injury where they knew he was going to be out for so long. To me, that's just they, they want him on the team. And so I think I may give him the nod over Seth Williams for special teams, really, but he's going to be taking up one of those wide receiver spots. Uh, and uh, then after that, Jalen Virgil can play football, but for back-to-back-to-back to back to back weeks, he's not in the game until the end of the I, third, yeah. fourth quarter. So yeah. to me, that just tells me for some reason – the coaches don't love him. I, st- I think he'll make the practice squad, but I just think that's too telling of a sign. I know. I wish I could have sat where I sat tonight for every preseason uh, game mm-hmm. because it, it makes it stand out to you more who's not on the field because mm-hmm. they're right in front of you. Right, yeah. right, you know, right. and I, I, that's what I was thinking about Jalen Virgil the whole first half. I'm like, man, yeah. dude can't get any run uh, with the twos. And that, that screams practice squad to me. Yeah. Um, they like him. He made plays. No one's going to take him, and, you know, he'll slide right onto the practice squad nicely. Then Brandon Johnson, you get the, you know, the redshirt year for him. Yeah. Um, and so that kind of works out nicely for the Broncos. Mm-hmm. The thing that's not nice is there, there's absolute giant question marks about the depth. Um, Seth Williams has question marks. Kendall Hinton has question marks. Right. You know, behind the main core, Nice, you know. Thankfully, KJ Hamler provided more answers than questions yeah, tonight. Yeah. Um, but behind the main core, it's it's not. You don't love it. You like the potential. No. You don't love the players. Totally. Yeah, you you love the depth. You wish you could take the five depth pieces and combine them into two mm-hmm. really good players. Yep. I I lean Brandon Johnson still. I. I I get putting him on the pre- – it depends on the injury, first of all. Like, if he can't play, he can't play. But if he's good to go, I think that he's probably shown the most. Um, with Seth Williams right there, Kendall Hinton has done what he's done. Again. He's, Kendall Hinton has performed in games before, but also if you would just plug Brandon Johnson in that exact same spot, sure. you still probably could have got those 15, 20 yards a game and, you know, whatever so, it was. here's an option. Brandon Johnson makes a 53. You put him on short-term IR. Mm-hmm. You put one of those guys on the practice squad, you bring him up for the first four weeks. Yeah, because, again, I'm not worried about losing those guys nope. to another team. I don't think so either. I, I really don't think so. Maybe Kendall Hinton. That's probably the one you're most scared of just because he's actually producing a game, and I still don't think you're that scared. So then we hmm. go on Kendall Hinton, and you're going Brandon Johnson with him? I think that's probably the best bet. I'm tempted to take Hinton off even, though. Mm. Just based on what we saw tonight. Fair. Fair. I am, too, honestly. I am, too. I don't know what they're... I, I think I'm going to get Tyree <laughs> Cleveland on the roster. I, I do, think, too. I think he maybe gained the most tonight. 
by all these guys leaving question marks out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like, look, none of these guys are, we can't let him go because of his offensive prowess. Right. And we know Tyree Cleveland is a special teams contributor. And maybe you could even call him like a special teams ace. Yeah. Um, so I think he wins the night Crazy by enough. not even playing. I think you're right. And, and then I would say Seth Williams is second. And just I have to like put the drop aside for yeah. a second. But he he was clearly a favorite of, of Brett Rippon, and that helps him. And yeah. Four catches on five targets for 68 yards. Yeah, that's good. That's still good. Yeah. Really good. It just really should have been a fifth one. And that would have been close to 100 for him. Would have. Yeah. That's like a 20-yard ball. And I think the reason he dropped it is because he was ready to go take off. Yeah. Yo, he was. He, he had was. a lot of separation. That's, that's exactly what he was thinking. Um, should we get to our king of the game? Let's do it. McTelvin. A game. A game. Yes, with the king of the game. Yeah. Did he do enough tonight to get a roster spot? Okay, so... First of all, I have an issue. Um, I'm, I'm not necessarily going to have an issue with him uh, getting king of the game because he also had a pass defense yep. Uh, yep. late in the game. He knocked one down. Uh, but he, I, I got to see more angles. But there was an angle they showed on the big screen mm -hmm. that I'm pretty sure Baron Browning stripped that ball. And he should have been credited with a sack, a strip, and a touchdown, the old triple play. Um, so... I'm taking that away from McTelvin personally. Wow. Um, wow. And so in, in the, in, I don't know if they do this in the preseason, but in the regular season, you can send in a stat appeal. Yeah. And I think Baron Browning would have done it and they would have that angle where I think he got his hand on the ball and knocked it out. And he would have ended up uh, like at, on Wednesday getting a sack and a, Fumble. Yeah. So I think you're wrong. Yep. Um, but again, I haven't seen an There's angle. There's only where... one angle that's like on Twitter. Yeah. And so exactly. I haven't seen an angle where I'm like 100% sure about it. But obviously, Barron swiped for it. I think he missed, and it was just a millisecond mm -hmm. after McTelvin hit the quarterback from behind. So yeah. I was trying to go frame by frame on the one that's on Twitter. <laughs> and if you do, you can kind of see it. But it was so blurry for me in the stadium because I didn't have good service yeah. that I like couldn't screenshot it right. and send it to you guys. But you can kind of see, I'm pretty sure before McTelvin gets there, the ball is like out of his hands. Out. Okay. Okay. And I think McTelvin getting there uh, stops him from being able to regather it. Right. Okay. I see. I see what you're saying. Uh, but regardless, mm -hmm. yep. McTelvin a had a great night. He also yes. forced a fumble on. Was it the very first play of the game for the Vikings? Uh, so yes, he did that. He had that pass batted in the air. Um, he was just a, a wrecking ball. Something that he has the talent to do, and we've talked about it before, but we just don't see it that often. And this was one where he knew it was game time, and he knew there was potentially a spot up. Does he replace Mike Purcell, or whose whose job would whose place would he take? That's I don't think he replaces Mike Purcell, no. who didn't play tonight, um, which tells me he's in. But Nathaniel Hackett was singing his praises after the game, mm -hmm. and he said he's all over the place. That's like. A really high praise for a defensive lineman you know being yeah. all over the place that's normally something you say about a safety or a linebacker yeah and he really was he was getting involved in a lot of plays um and when he got to the ball he made plays so if i were i don't think he's going to take a roster spot away from another defensive lineman i think if they're keeping him it's because they're taking a roster spot away from another position what position would that be what was the ones we were down to the other day it was like eric tomlinson yeah Jonathan Cooper. Um, Eric Tomlinson, by the way, two catches today. Jonathan Cooper, uh, sack. sack. Yep. yep, Eric Tomlinson, man. He looks smooth out there. <laughs> You're just trying to wiggle him on the field for the first play of the game. Uh, so I, No, I just want him on the team. <laughs> his his um, picture, like his team picture, makes yep. me so happy. Yep, yep, yep. Like, just a goofy-looking, massive well, He's dude. so big. Like, you see how yep. big he is on the field? And then they show his picture, and you're like, that's an offensive lineman. Yep, yep, yep. And it's, oh, it's And he's, in one play, he was spread out wide today. Yep. No, multiple plays. Multiple. That was like a, that was a formation they were working in tonight. Um, so, it was those two. Who was the, um, oh, DTY. Yep. And he had a really close to having a huge play. Yep. Um, and then there was one other one. Um, our, was it Fayon Hicks? Yes. Mm -hmm. I could see that. Um, mm. it, I could see it coming out of the secondary. Because so. we had, I think, six corners making the team already. No, I didn't. 
was it six or was it five corners, five safeties? Was it five? And I think you can get Fayon Hicks to the practice squad. A hundred percent. Um, which is why I think we ended up keeping Tomlinson. We did. Um, so I think you take away one of those, like you take away a safety, you sure. take away something and then add a defensive lineman. I could see that happening for sure. After tonight, just looking at, it, I think it's the Joneses, Deshaun Williams, Mike Purcell, then any, yeah, a no, gym he's for sure there, a gym and Henning's in and he's just been so much worse than those other two who, uh, Henning's in and a gym, maybe not a gym consistent Who's been worse any. Oh, yeah, but a third-round pick? <sighs> yeah. I mean, They're he, not what, cutting he him. No. Fourth. Yeah, I guess. Maybe it's seven, then. It's possible. You I, know, the, I still the, think you can move any of them. The funny thing is we go through all these exercises, and we try to predict the 53-man roster, and we base it off of conventional thinking, oh, mm-hmm. you should have this many of this, this many of that. And every year, they're, they just say F it at one yep. position. They're yep. like, we like these guys, so we're keeping them. Yep, it's true, and that's probably what you should do. It's probably smarter to, to have the better players on the team. Yes. Yeah, give give me your best 53. Now, that doesn't mean keep like eight wide receivers or whatever if you right. can, but or if you have guys that you like, but you don't need 10 defensive backs. No. No, you don't. Uh, especially when, you know, one of them, and I'll touch wood for him, but just, Justin Simmons plays every play. Yep. Yep. So, you know, cross off any any need for depth there, at least from a game-to-game basis, as long as he's healthy. Um, but you can you can cut corners in certain places. The Broncos have, you know, it is, I'm so used to it. The Broncos have been cutting corners at quarterback. I, and this isn't necessarily <laughs> cutting corners, but, like, a lot of teams keep three quarterbacks. Yeah. The Broncos haven't kept three quarterbacks in, man, since, did they keep three? It was... Simeon on the roster, he was. So they kept three Peyton Manning in 2015. I think that's the last time they kept three. That's kind of crazy. That's especially crazy. <laughs> yes. What they, I guess they were afraid of losing Simeon. I don't know. Uh, Gary maybe. Kubiak did yeah. love him. He did love him. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah. I think. So then any chance they keep three this year? Three quarterbacks. God, I would hate it so They're much. Like there yeah. is a chance, yes. I would, I, I would hate it. But it's you know we're so used we're, we're so used to it not happening that we kind of think it's like um, rare. It's right. not no it's something that happens all around the league. It would be a mistake though. Yes. Yeah, a waste a waste of a roster spot. Yep, I completely agree. The hard decision should be which one to keep. Mm-hmm. Yes. Anyone else stand out to you tonight uh, that deserves praise? Yeah, Nick Benito. How about the way yeah. he ended the game back-to-back sacks? And speaking of Nathaniel Hackett singing the praises, he was singing the praises of Nick Benito after the game said uh, that he was doing everything perfectly up to his back-to-back sacks. That's awesome. He actually played the run a lot better tonight, something he I did. really noticed. Um, I hate that his two sa- I want to be able to say, like, oh, he's he had those two sacks at the end to just, like, vault him into the season. It's just hard for me to put aside the fact yeah. that, like, the end of the game is the worst players play. Yeah. yeah. At the not, same time. Not on the Broncos side, but on the other side, right? Yeah. Whoever's yeah. blocking him, that's their worst option. Uh, that's still on the roster that they're going to play tonight. Um, so that's hard for me to put that aside. But I do love, like, at least from a confidence standpoint, he's, you know, his confidence could not be any higher right now. And in that situation, too. Like, that's when you want guys to show up is yep. when the other team has one drive to go and try to salvage the game. He has ended the game. And sure, like ending the game doesn't mean as much in the preseason, but that's definitely something to get excited about. Absolutely, I love that the Broncos did not care about preseason at all and went two and one. Yeah, heck yeah, I yeah. love that. Yeah. I love that. Really quick, speaking of Jalen Virgil, since we talked about him, that kickoff was oh brutal. Bro. So unfortunately, that did not do him any favors. Yeah. Okay. So here's where I'm gonna make an excuse for him. A little spin okay. zone. These guys are told we want to return every kick, yeah. and he clearly had that in his head as he's sprinting yeah. over there to get yeah. it. And what's funny is he probably would have gotten yelled at if he pulls up on that and it bounces out of bounds or whatever. Yeah. Um, like, hey, we you know we need to make big, be making plays, but not nearly as much as he must have been yelled at for it afterwards. Like, what sucks is I, I would guess Dwayne Stukes is like, 
yo, like you don't have to get every, you know, like don't go, <laughs> right. don't dive for the ball, damn. He's near. like, but you told me to get everything. Yeah, he's like, we thought we were trying to return everything. Um, I was watching the, again, just like a great standpoint that you get from those seats. I'm just like watching the players, and they're like all like kind of whispering to each other. They're like, did he drop it? <laughs> <laughs> he dropped it out of bounds. I'm like, oh my god, so bad, uh, so bad. Say, or, uh, that wasn't the worst play on special teams all night either. Man, I didn't. Even, it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even think about it. if Brett Urban caps that off. That's a 97 yard drive. Yep. Damn impressive. Yeah. Didn't he do that earlier in the preseason too? He did have a long one. I'm not sure I about think 90, it was 97. Was it 97? Yards. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Great year that 97. Um, <laughs> it was. So I was born. Oh, man. Oh, Lots yeah. of dubs. Yeah. Uh, maybe it took it down a little bit. <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> no. Um, Get okay. your bag off my desk. <laughs> <laughs> man. I'm trying to think of other guys. Um, I thought I actually do think DTY had a really good game. It's yeah. it, it's not quite like the the Sam Martin thing where it's like he made the play and it didn't count kind of thing, but right. it's close. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. he got in there, he popped that dude. Yes, he did for what looked like a, a stop. We didn't get a single replay um, in oh, the stadium. No way. So oh, was it close? Want to show it? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was really close. Did you did you think it was a touchdown? Yeah, I think it. I think yeah. it was the right call. But Definitely. It was close. Bummer. He came. He was a missile. Yes, and he yeah. has that. Like even just the way he's built, mm-hmm. I love. I I love this. Like I'm glad he's okay. Number one, dude comes out of the concussion tent, <laughs> goes on the field and gets yeah. a fourth down sack. I'm yeah. like, that's legendary yeah. status. Yeah. And he was pissed that he had to go into the concussion yeah. tent. Like they came up to him on the field and he's just like, yeah, what? Yeah. And they're like, oh, you like stumbled or whatever when you were getting up. They pull him off the field. He's just shaking his head. They ping him in the tent. He's like, oh, my God. They send him out there. Boom. Goes yeah. in. Gets the sack. I was like, that's, that's, good, that's good stuff right there. And, and I think this was a, a low-key big game for him because a fifth rounder, you can move on from a rookie fifth round pick. And he wasn't. He, he was on the bubble kind of for number crunching yep. purposes, mm-hmm. uh, um, not necessarily his play. And I think tonight he earned that spot. And he's a, he's that perfect kind of hybrid player that you can bring in there if you want to go nickel, but you're you know you don't want to fully abandon your run stopping abilities. Right. Like but put a safety down there in the box, um, use him you know in a, in a myriad of different ways, and the dude can hit. Yeah, and I was gonna mm-hmm. say not obviously he's not a Kareem Jackson replacement one for one moving forward after this year, but. If you want a similar type of player, a guy who's going to bring the boom in the safety position, he could be it moving forward. Other than those that we've stated, any disappointments for you guys? Mm, that's a good Demari question. Mathis. Oh, I have a couple guys that I want to shout out in terms of positive. Mike Boone. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You cannot tell me that that guy can't make plays for you on Sundays. He's by far the shiftiest of your running back stable. <clears throat> he looks great. With the ball in his hand, and especially in space, yep. I completely agree. Speaking um, of ball in your hand in space, Montreal Washington. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Get yeah. that man the ball in space. You know who uh, Nathaniel Hackett credited for that play? The uh, like coach calling it? The last... <sighs> Zach Azani. No. Like, ev- <laughs> way weirder. Um, Barry, the offensive yep. line Butch coach. Butch Barry <laughs> dialed that play up. Isn't like, that bizarre? He said, hey, let's call this. Yeah, I think so. He said, let's run as far away from my offensive lineman as possible. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is interesting. A yeah. lot of people on Twitter were like, hey, save that for the regular season. What do you guys think? There's um, plenty more. There's so much more. It's just like a, it was just a reverse. Well, to Broncos fans, that's like a crazy <laughs> trick play now. Yeah. So, uh, But I completely agree. Now... Thankfully, that's just a reverse. Yeah, like that should yeah. be pretty standard. If you don't, if you don't run that every game, then there's something wrong. Like, like you've got one, maybe not from that exact formation or whatever, but yeah. there's probably at least one or two where a receiver comes around and gets the ball, then whatever off of it too. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I I love that. I mean, just the running game in general, so refreshing to see yeah. six yards a carry tonight oh my goodness um uh, you know shout out to ozigbo who goes yeah. for 59 yards um best thing that happened for nebraska today practice squad uh. for him probably <laughs> hardy averages 5.8 a carry obviously mike boone eight yards a carry um so it just to see the team run the ball like 
she did that make that so much easier for Brett or Brett Rippon on that first drive mm -hmm. that they could just mix it up. Everything was working. All the buttons they pressed were right. Absolutely. Yeah. Sorry. I thought there was more uh, to that, but uh, one, my, the last guy I'm going to give a shout out to a guy you mentioned was Zigbo. Uh, he may be the biggest riser in the past week because he went from unemployed to now he's going to be on the practice squad. He, he's not going to make the roster, but he's going to be the practice squad running back for the Broncos. I mean, he, yeah. Uh, at the risk of doing what I did on Twitter, um, oh, probably not with Mike Boone, Mike Boone having. 44 yards. I was going to say, did he lead the Broncos running backs in preseason rushing? Oh, yeah. That was quite a mistake, <laughs> I view, on Twitter. Um, we, need to, we need to hold you more accountable, Ryan. Um, no, it was close <laughs> enough. <laughs> oh, I had so much fun with that. Well, at least I admitted that i didn't look it up instead yeah. of just tweeting it's like it's broncos are you know like i was i was straight up said like i'm not looking this up but here's what i'm here's what i'm confident yeah. in i actually wouldn't have called you out if you just said it as a statement because that, <laughs> that would have been me? like because that would have been like a dick thing to do like oh. this this stat is wrong but because you kind of did it in the playful way, i was like oh i'm gonna have some fun with i this. feel like if i just said it with conviction you probably would have just believed it because the vibes yeah, were definitely saying that well what how i actually knew was literally <laughs> Like one minute before I looked that up, because uh, I was like, "This is they're doing so much better," and I was like, "Oh, okay, they're they're." So when I tweeted it, it was sixty three, and they had had seventy one combined <laughs> yeah. in in the other games, and then I think like two carries later yeah. they surpassed yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but Ozigbo, oh, I think, outrushed Hardy, anyone else that was on the team at one point that was running the ball like fifty nine yards tonight, uh, twenty six yard carry. That's uh yeah he almost yep. almost surpassed the, com the <laughs> yep. combined uh, last Dang. two games. Dang! I'll give a shout out to KJ Hamler too. Yep. We kind of mentioned him earlier, but he was really good. He was picking apart different spots in the space. Like he was he was coming across the field. There were a couple times they should have thrown in the ball, but didn't. He was really good. Yeah, he was. Man, Brett Rippin. I think he was just trying to be efficient and uh, move the ball mm -hmm. but there was at least one time where kj's yep. wide open mm, yep. down the field it was the fourth and one play that they hit i think he hit tomlinson or someone in the flat yep. for for the first down and kj was wide it would have been the easiest touchdown fourth and one i'm i'm team just moved sticks. That's, and that, that, that's fair that's yeah. fair but oh man wouldn't have been so great to get kj in the end zone it would have for sure and that's definitely why he forced it into him earlier he did um and i, I i'm convinced that if he waits just another half a second because kj's kind of coming around that guy and he just didn't give it enough time for kj to get out there yeah. or he just leads him probably a little bit more and yeah and a great play by the defender really good really good yeah um okay American Raptors. Let's go. Yeah, American Raptors. They are back at it. And you guys know the deal. The American Raptors are doing such a cool thing with the team that they're putting together. And they're, they're playing really fun games over there in Infinity Park. It's only like 10 minutes from the bar, 15 minutes from the bar. So if you come out here to the bar before, why don't you stop by Infinity Park over the weekends and catch yourself some American Raptors games. I believe we had a crew out there. Uh, what are you guys looking at me for? <laughs> I was not looking at you. I was looking at Henry. <laughs> I was doing communication on the next read. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry that I got in that crossfire of the communication. Um, but American Raptors, oh my gosh, they're doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> don't look. Look at the camera. You got to be like a, I don't know, like players when the wave's going on. Just zone in. It's just you yeah. in the field. No, but the trainers. players were all involved in the wave today. Yeah. So. Yeah, not the players there, who were played. That's there true, was that's one true. player who was definitely not involved. He was surrounded oh, by trainers. Yes, that, that is very true. But at, at, over at American Raptors, maybe you can awful. get the wave going on over at Infinity Park. We've also got the best coverage of them. So check us out over at ddnvr.com for your American Raptors coverage. And also check them out over at AmericanRaptors.com to get your free tickets. Also, keep your eyes very mm -hmm. fixated on Twitter. Oh. If, if you're not like me, you're always fixated on Twitter. Like when Zach tweeted at me. It's just the kind of journalism they teach at CU. I was like, no, I was just on Twitter the whole time. I have no idea what they were teaching. Um, but keep your eyes on Twitter for announcements regarding the bar. We are very Ooh. close. The latest all update. Social. Yeah, all social. But Twitter. I'm a Twitter guy. Yeah. Um, uh, we got we got TVs up today. Oh, ho, ho. oh and yeah. they are 
Whew, there's, huge upgrade. I heard a little rumor that there's more TVs than ever before. More too. TVs and bigger TVs. It, like by far, too. The yes. size and the quantity. Over double wow. the TVs we had uh, compared to the previous bar. And yeah. When it comes to TV, size does matter, too. Yes. That is true. Yeah. But usually you have to choose. Like, do you want size or quantity? Yep. We've got bigger and more. Oh, oh baby. <laughs> wow. So there you go. Lucky us. Uh, have more. I, I, I wasn't. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> but usually you could be like, oh, in this space, you could either have right. three large TVs yep. or five smaller TVs. Yep. Well, we just did it all. Damn. I love it. I cannot yep. wait. Yep. Uh, super excited. So keep an eye out. We, of course, will be open uh for week one but yep. um keep an eye out for the grand opening party which will take place a little bit before that mm, i love it quite a tease there yes all right um let's jump into super chats first Abs- absolutely cool what do we got al give me one second all right we'll wait patiently <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> you guys want to talk right. about greg bell we got bud lightyear sending 420 wow that's love the pod (laughs) love this team let's ride maybe it should be bud light up oh Oh. wait why bud light up bud light up i'm gonna let you just (laughs) try and figure this one out oh bud light up with 420 there we go okay (laughs) out of babe wow it's almost midnight Thanks right. for the, uh, Garth, the super chat. Garth Knight's a 4.99 super chat. Hey gang, love the conversations and can't wait till September 12th on the Monday Night Football Broncos oh Country. Let's ride. Heck yeah, Let's Garth ride. can't wait. 16 days away, guys. Oh, dude, don't say that. That no, makes it so far. much worse. That does okay. sound like okay. a long. How time. about CU football? Six days away. Let's go. Yeah. Oh. Let's go. We're week. already one and zero. Yeah, because yeah. Nebraska yeah, lost. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Gregory here sent twenty dollars of just Heck a yeah. super chat. Well, Thank nothing. you, Gregory. Love, you. love Gregory. If you want to say anything else, we'll read it. Yeah, we ever get his uh, his age officially? Uh, not seven. Older we know seven. he's not seven. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. What? Well, uh, Gregory. Confused. This is Gregory. This is Gregory. <laughs> this is the Gregory who is sending you hundreds of dollars. What happened to you? Oh, yes. <laughs> Gregory. Yes. Don't don't drink, people. Uh, my, my brain's shot. <laughs> um, and then we had a bunch of people out, letting us know where they were watching and repping. Can- we had Kansas, Hawaii, um mm. south carolina oh, like nice. i said we had a lot of people from everywhere washington so shout out to you guys all for staying mm. up and watching let's go washington uh, shout okay. out hawaii except for the football team who let us down greatly tonight they, to sure Vandy? they got blown out oh wow vanderbilt's probably gonna lose by 60 next week too who do they play? I don't know, but just whoever they, <laughs> whoever they play. That's a good, good prediction there. <laughs> yeah, I'll All take right. that, yeah. They're going to win by 60 tonight. 56 to 10. Oh, Game's not over. Yikes. Kale like, Sorbo in the chat saying, oh. miss you, fellas. Oh, oh, welcome home. Yes, they made it back to yes. Denver tonight. So welcome back, Kale. Welcome, Kale. Um, Gregory sent us $2 again with... Uh, <laughs> let's yeah, go, Gregory. Hey, Bob's credit card. Does that mean he's two? Um, Could it be code? Oh, no. And then we just got another super oh. chat from Andres saying, did Zach admit he was wrong about moving Browning to outside linebacker? Why is Ooh. Zach getting specific? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, love I this. think we all did. I, I think love we this. all agree. Well. Yeah, I, was, um, yeah, I yeah, probably went I mean, harder on that than anyone. Uh, absolutely. I, I think uh, Baron Browning looks great from the outside. Um, and they, oh they rolled the dice and it paid off. So here's where I stand on this. It has clearly paid off as a long-term move. And I think that's where we missed in our original criticism of it is, in my opinion, this is a Bradley Chubb replacement move. And I think what we're see what we've seen from him so far and what I hope that he continues into the season, we'll say that dude can be a full-time outside linebacker for you starting next year and you don't have to pay uh, Bradley Chubb. That's not something I thought of really when th- when we were so upset about the move. Because it was just like, this dude can play for you this year at inside linebacker. He should probably be the starter there yeah. next to Josie. Um, so I think what you're going to see is if he was at inside this year, you would have seen him be on the field more this year. But they just said the yeah, upside is so high on the outside 
that we're going to move him out there, and hopefully he is our answer to Bradley Chubb going in free agency. Yep. Yeah, and it was still a, a dice a roll of the dice yep. uh, either way, and credit to Baron Browning and the coaching staff. They, they saw it. Yep. Yeah, we've got yeah. Norris here in the comments saying Browning sh- had shades of Vaughn tonight. Ooh. Ooh. I mean, even oh. his dances kind of look vaughn yeah, yeah, they do. They do, and it's, it's the get-off and the uh-huh. bend, which looks so good. Yep. For sure. All right. Um, Bryant asked, how does the Johnson injury change the competition for the last wide receiver spots? <laughs> you have a Johnson injury. <laughs> I know. <yeah. laughs> oh, um, so wait, who do you call if you have a Johnson injury? I don't know. I was going to say like Manscaped. Just like <laughs> it's true. Just, like, it's the rest true. of the area feel a little better. <laughs> <laughs> um, call 1-800-888-DICK. Wow. What? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Brian says, so how does it change the competition? I just think it opens it opens a spot up. I think, Zach, you probably had a really good idea there, which is red shirt year. Yeah. Um, he's not, it's not like he was so good that you're like, we got to get him back as soon as we can to get him out there on the field. You're like, we really like this guy. We like his potential. We'll see you next year in camp. Yep, because how much, how much are you going to miss if you don't have him this year? The big thing is not getting him at practice. Like you I, just want him getting reps and doing those sorts of things. If you're on the practice or on the injury reserve, you can't. That so is that true. part would really. That's sting. actually a really good point. You're probably just bringing back the same player next year, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Like, yeah, if the you option get, is that or not bring him back, yeah, all of next offseason. You can take mental reps. Can't take mental <laughs> reps. I don't want to hear another okay. word about mental reps. <laughs> We've got Chris here saying, "Bro, your shoes are way too white. There's actually a glare." Well, wow. take him off. That's a huge yeah. compliment. Yeah. Thing. It really is. Yeah, <laughs> that has to be Big just like a foot compliment. guy trying to. There is someone. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, what that yeah, is. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the super chat? <laughs> Forty-five bucks. I'll show you my uh, I, my golf tan. Well, you're gonna be showing Gregory your golf tan. <laughs> yes, you uh, are. He came in with the big one. Yes, Gregory sent a fifty-dollar hey, super chat. We figured Gregory. it out. Gregory, He's four thousand. Do not need to send any more. Please stop. <laughs> He's four thousand nine hundred ninety-nine years old. Put a comment with these. <laughs> so Ryan's taken off. His shirt now? Is no. Right? Yes. No, no, no. he is not Rudo. <laughs> this is not Rudo level. 4,999 um, years old. All right. That's the code. Got That's Don- what he's saying. We've got Donnie here saying, I've heard Henry mention Montana several times. Does anyone know if he's from here? Do we know? Do we? I can't remember. Yeah. Sources confirm? <laughs> yeah. Sources confirm. Mm, yes. Confirm. Yes, yes, And then we yes. had a few more people add comments saying San Diego, Cali, where Heck they're yeah. watching everything from. So that That's is awesome. it. I love it. Uh, also, shout out to the guy who's sitting next to me tonight. I was telling him about the bar, and he kept saying, "Oh, I'll come. I'm not afraid of a bar." <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I was so confused. He said that at least four times. Didn't his wife also say it? I think his wife also <laughs> was that no, the tagline. It was it wasn't his He's wife. It was his girlfriend. Oh, and um, he oh, said, Greg, what are you doing? He's 499 <laughs> years old. <laughs> he and, said uh, 499. So he was like. Yeah, I'm not afraid of a bar. I'll come to a bar. I was like, cool, man. See you there. And then he was like, yeah, uh, got to bring her with me. If I go alone, I'll get myself in trouble. Oh, my gosh. Oh. I was like trying to like piece things it's together. Yeah. Like, why is wow. he, he was at what? Maybe at some point he was afraid of bars, but he's overcome that fear. Because Does he know what a bar is? I would assume so. I, you would think. Yeah. Maybe he didn't. And was just like, oh, I right. bet this is what people say. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm not afraid of your bar. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the weirdest things I've ever heard. He even said it right as I was leaving. Like, I'll see you at the bar. He's like, yeah, man, I'm not afraid. Uh. <laughs> Cody here said, how many Zach Stevens does it take to beat the Seahawks week one? Mm, 22 Zach question. Stevens is like 10 mm. Janos. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Two to one, no like way. A one to one ratio. I'd say. Oh god! <laughs> All right. So I, if, there's, if we have to use Zach on offense, Gregory. he's the quarterback, and he's kicking oh. off. He's doing everything. I gotta tell you, my arm strength's probably a seven. The leg? seven out of a hundred. Yeah, I'm mad. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, oh man! So we probably can't throw the ball at all. I don't know. So how many Zach Stevens can we use to block? That's true. You do get as many of me as you want. Four oh. to one. 40? 40 on 11? The thing is, like... It is a Seahawks. 
you're probably giving up a field goal on a lot of drives just because I don't think you can kick off. Every time one gets injured, do they instantly get replenished? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Okay, so you don't just lose yeah. them. Because I was going to say, like, you're probably going to lose them all the first quarter. You start with 100. <laughs> so you can narrow down. Well, what do you think, like, the max number get, that gets hurt on like, one play is? Boye Mafe just, like, coming off the edge. How, like, <laughs> just bowling through Zach's. I think there's a play where you lose six Zach's. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> But there's just more. They're just coming in waves. We need six boys. How full would the sideline be? Uh, oh, the visual is so good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Empathetic. Gregory ends the show with a hundred dollars. Oh my god! Gregory. He's a hundred years old. Oh. We're going to end the show Are now so we can me, stop Gregory. giving. <laughs> well, Gregory is we such really a appreciate you, Gregory. We love you. But, but love you don't Gregory. don't it, are you don't do this if you're drunk or something. <laughs> Gregory just likes to make it rain, dude. That's what he does. He does. Yeah. He does. Thank you, Gregory. Come enjoy our bar. Uh, yeah. Yes, come through the bar for sure. I don't think he's scared. First drinks on us. <laughs> I know he's not afraid of a bar. Uh, and uh, this has been great. RIP to the preseason. RIP in peace. Um, and uh, that wraps it up for us. Um, don't go to sleep tonight without watching the oh Greg Bell gosh. video. Oh my gosh. Twitter Greg Bell. <laughs> also know Greg that Bell. it's parody. And then find out why it's parody. Right. Yes, yes, yes. I didn't even know why it was parody. And it was still amazing. When, so we were laughing like heartily about yeah. it. And then I was like, you guys know what, like, the, what's referencing, right? Neither of these guys no. knew. So then I got to read them the tweet that, uh, that burst it all. Yeah. And that sent us into a... Uh, a spiral that I weren't sure we were going to be able to pull ourselves out of to do this show. <laughs> I'm going to watch that to fall asleep tonight. Hell yeah. All right. We'll see you guys on Monday.